You're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Four seconds left. Good evening, everybody. We are live with RBLR Sports Lightning. I'm Joe Zamataro in for Jake Ricker. We are in the heart of the slow off season right now, but today I'm really excited about a topic that we have at hand. We're reviewing some of our favorite and least favorite player trades all throughout the history of the Lightning. Joined with me is Matt Gannon and Nick Porcelli. Guys, how are you doing today? I'm doing just swell. Uh, glad to have Nick back with us for his second show. I was a little apprehensive after he uh, beat me in trivia a couple weeks ago. All jokes aside, happy to have you here back with us, Nick. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm glad to be back. Uh, glad this time we're not competing against each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm excited for this one. You know, it's been a relatively slow off season at this point, but uh, you know, reviewing some of the trades, uh, we talked about having this uh, uh, topic for the last couple of days. One that was actually suggested by one of our fans, uh, Dan gave us this idea, and I love it because you know it started to really stimulate some memories of past lightning days, and I'm excited to to, to get us started. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at lightning trades um and we're going to list our favorite ones as well as our least favorite the only um caveat is that we're not going to do trades that are just for draft picks uh mcdonough would be a good example of that where we got him for was that a seventh round pick i think guys um so it's going to be a player for player trade um if you're new here be sure to like and subscribe hit that uh, notification bell on youtube so you uh, make sure you never miss us when we go live um to start us off uh either of you guys want to go first uh, with with one of your favorite picks well let right me into- let me ask real quick so you're not talking like straight one for one deals are you you're just talking about pl- no player traded for picks well right so i mean we're okay. i don't yeah again mcdonough you know is a seven million dollar contract um mm-hmm. but all we gave up was you know like a late draft pick in order to get them that mm-hmm. was like a, a a salary dump sort of thing uh, but actual trades were, you know, we gave up assets, we gave up uh, actual players rather than just assets, and how it impacted the team and how it ended up working out. And also, I want to ask two clarifying questions. We can't talk about trades that just involve draft picks, or what about ones where we got a draft pick and ext- and we traded away a player, and that pick we used turned out to be a good player? Uh, I think that would be great for some notable mentions. Okay. I have a feeling I know which one he's talking about. <laughs> well, the funny thing is there's been so many over the years. I mean, you really uh, can look at some of the, the past trades that we've made that were just for picks, uh, and it really opens the field up uh, a, a lot more. So it's something we could actually even um, look at. You've talked about this before, Matt, the rabbit hole that is um, a pick that we trade away or acquired through a trade that ended up developing into another player. Maybe we drafted someone that we then traded. Uh, you've kind of talked about that rabbit hole at uh, at one point or time. Oh, yeah. No, I, I love going down uh, trade trees and seeing how they evolve over time. Like, so uh, I, I guess I won't dig too deep and, and spoil anything. But, yeah, if you just go back and look at some of just even minor, minor trades and how they evolve over time. I'm sure Nick, with some of, some of the writing that he does, He's a big fan of how they evolve as well. So uh, it, it is always a fun tangent to go down. Great. Well, let's uh, let's get right into it then. And, um, you know, do, do either of you guys want to go first? I don't want to pull off the uh, the top of the stack and maybe ruin one of you guys' is, is picks. Well, see, I, I, Nick, do you need time to re- reevaluate? Uh, it seems like the the one uh, trade you had. No, I got, I got a couple. Uh, okay. There, Players we traded away, and there's players we got. So I, I can, I can start off if we want. Um, Go for it. So technically, I got two because they feel like they're the same trade because we both got them around the same time. I'll, 
start off with the uh, trade that we used to get Blake Coleman. I think that was one of our better ones. We uh, got to pull up the trade. I actually wrote a list down just right, right before we filmed. Uh, we traded him in exchange for Nolan Foote, who has not played that much for the Devils. And we did trade him for a first-round pick. And currently, that player who they drafted is in the minors, and he is not current, and he's not even currently in their minor league system. That that is an awesome pick. I remember uh, one of my buddies is a really good or a really big uh, New Jersey fan, and I remember when that pick happened, I was not at all uh, familiar with Coleman, and he loved it for the Lightning. He was so high on the guy, and you know was really excited for what we got. I had no idea he would end up being such an important part of of the team and uh really add to the chemistry that we needed in order to win a cup that's a that's an awesome choice you, you know why that it, it, he trading for him was worth it it was one moment the buzzer beating goal in game two of the 2021 stanley cup finals which i was lucky enough to be there live for oh that, that alone is awesome makes it worth it and, that's cool yeah i i remember when that trade first happened um because that was before the uh, the COVID shutdown, right? That was the 2020 trade deadline. Um, and you only got to play like six games for the team. And like, I, I can't remember in like those very few games before the, the COVID shutdown and all that, if he was really outstanding. But I remember like, you know, going on, you know, NHL franchise mode and getting Blake Coleman, you know, because I, I was so obsessed with what we got. I was a fan of him. Like when he was on the Devils, I didn't really know exactly what we were going to get, but I knew what he was going to be, you know, a penalty killing, just hard nosed, great all around style player. And even with him leaving the lightning, uh, signing a big deal in Calgary, which didn't really look like it was that great of a deal. He still st- scored 30 goals last year. He's actually kind of blossoming into a, a heck of an offensive player. But yeah, I remember when he first came over, I was in love with Blake Coleman. I still am. He, he's one of those that got away uh, to me. Yeah, no matter like what would have happened, like I would still argue that the trade was worth it because even though he didn't play that many games, he was crucial in us winning two straight cups. But the fact that also the players and the picks that we traded away didn't really do anything for the Devils, that pretty much means we got him for like for really nothing. So that just that just adds on to it. So I was gonna say one of the biggest things from from having foot on the team is the fact that uh, we had his brother at the same time. I mean, that was just one of those instances where it was kind of neat, and that was about the best we we really got, I think, out of that uh, out of that tandem. Yeah, we had feet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, I I wouldn't mind going next with one, um, only because it actually is directly related uh, to to yours there, Nick. Um, my favorite one is going to be the the Nemesnikov trade with um, Howard and Hayek. No, really? Did I pull yours? <laughs> i mean like we can go on and on about this trade like i had a lot for this that's funny because i had a, i had a couple of others i wasn't i wasn't sure but uh here how about you do that because i have some backups you pull this one go for okay. it okay i like i i kind of figured somebody here would have it like to, but to me this is maybe not hands down but it is one of the most important you know trades in lightning history because again it does tie into that blake coleman trade you know with you know getting or sending off to Mesnikov, Howden, and Libor Hayek in exchange. I think we also sent a, a conditional pick as well in exchange for JT Miller and Ryan McDonough. Like looking back at that trade, like it is a clean sweep, uh, you know, for the Lightning. Done deal every time. But then trading JT Miller to the Vancouver Canucks, which arguably you can say we sold low on at the time. And looking back on it today, we really didn't got get a lot of value back for JT Miller either. You take that first round pick we get from Vancouver and send it to the New Jersey Devils for Blake Coleman. And he had some big, big moments like we were talking about that Superman uh, buzzer beating goal uh, in the 2021 finals. Just that whole third line. That's what people talk about looking back on the uh, on the, uh, you know, back to back years is that third line, which he was a crucial part of. So that trade uh, Rangers fans hate that trade. It is like a black horrible, horrible topic to bring up to Rangers fans. And that just makes my day. I'm not a big fan of the Rangers. So this this trade literally is one of the most important trades in Lightning history. G- again, you know, we haven't even got into the actual players yet. JT Miller and Ryan McDonough. <laughs> uh, like Ryan McDonough, we could go on and on and on and on about him. To interrupt you for a second, though, so, I think you did say it. It This probably was the most important trade 
for the entire franchise because on the back of this trade, we got two cups out of it. Oh, easy. And if you just think of some of the big, mo like the two biggest moments I can think of of Ryan McDonough in each of those uh, finals runs is like, you remember it was game two of the Eastern Conference finals uh, against New York. Uh, Ryan McDonough gets a pass over to Kucherov with like five seconds to go in a tied game, puts us up, you know, uh, gives us the go ahead goal with five seconds to go. Huge play by him right there. And then not to mention all the defense that comes along with it, his perfect positioning, like at a time, maybe even still the best defensive defenseman in the league. And then 2021, that amazing stretch pass to Braden Point in game one of round one against the Panthers. That was one of the greatest play. That was one of the greatest games of all time right there. And those are just two highlights of, you know, an amazing but short Tampa Bay career. Like, again, go on and on and on about it. That's funny. I was saying that maybe we'll go down the you know the rabbit hole, the the trade tree, uh, and right off the bat, that's what we end up doing. <laughs> the uh, I mean the the fact that Miller turned out to be such a prolific player for another team uh, was really surprising to me with with this one too, because I knew he was good, and we played here, he played well, and we had, I mean, one game shy of uh, you know holding the all time record for was the most wins in a season. I think it was tied that season. Um, yeah. you know, Boston came through later with, with their squad, but at the same rate to have that team and then get swept the first round, uh, the Miller goes over to Vancouver, starts putting up numbers, but he's, you know, there's been a lot of talk and we've talked about on the podcast about him being almost like a cancer in the locker room. Um, you know, it kind of shows too, that maybe if we held on to him, we wouldn't have had the winning mentality. We had that perfect combo. Um, and you know, the, the trades work out for, for you know various reasons where it benefits the team in ways that you don't always foresee and uh you know bringing bringing McDonough over and even getting them back again that uh, was such a big thing I think for the squad yeah and like is anybody upset with how Miller has panned out in Vancouver because he's been a you know almost a hundred point player you know pretty much since he's got there that first year not so much but you know in that 90 point range I don't think anybody's really exactly two two cups Nobody's I mean, really what, too bummed. <laughs> what can you say? You can, <laughs> I mean, there's, there's, uh, you know, guys that that constantly are uh, in some of my groups that talk about how we should have held on to March or so, or, or uh, uh, you know, uh, Verhage. You know, we should have kept those guys. But you know, Verhage, we we won a cup uh, with them, without them. We, you know, we won two without uh, uh, March or so. So it would have been nice to keep those sort of guys. We were deep, though, and there's a reason why you win cups. You got to be deep. See, with the Verhage one, though, that one kind of does sting to me because it's like you let him go for nothing. You didn't get anything back. Yeah, you won the cup the year after, but, like, you, you what? He, his deal, like, he signed with the Panthers. It was a really cheap deal. I know we couldn't really fit it under the cap at the time. I don't know if we knew what we had. Like, I liked Verhage, but I don't know. I think know that if... we knew, but I think you just get uh, – you have to look – three steps ahead it's almost like you're playing chess when you're playing gm and knowing mm -hmm. that there is the flat cap it uh really really kind of hand ties you and there's not uh it doesn't give you room for movement or to wait for something to pan out when you're right up against it to be fair the panthers didn't know what they had in him either that's why they exposed him in the expansion draft so there you that's go that's a good point all right so i do have an honorable mention already and since we're talking about a trade uh, with New York, I figure that uh, this is a good time to to bring up the Marty trade. That was uh, this is this is one that um, man, you know, just when I think uh, I get over it as a fan, I started you know looking at these list of trades and all those emotions come rushing back. Marty demanded to be traded to the New York Rangers from the organization because he was snubbed uh, by all reports, and this is what. Both sides uh, of uh, you know, both camps have said because he was snubbed by Eiserman for being put on the Olympics, uh, the Olympic team for Canada, who Eiserman was the head of. And Eiserman said that he stepped back, but Marty decided he wanted to move uh, away from Tampa for that reason. And he said, I'll only go to the Rangers. And somehow, even, even though, uh, you know, Eiserman had almost no choices, he walked away with the Rangers captain and, and a first, was a first and a second round, uh, draft pick for for that trade i don't even think was it a first and a second it was a first i think i'm pretty
pretty confident it was a first and a second, or maybe it was a conditional second. I'll look it up. Here. Um, yeah. So I mean, it, for somebody that doesn't really have much to negotiate with, I always thought that that was one heck of a trade to be able to convince, um, you know, the the GM. I can't remember who the GM of the the Rangers was at That's at the a, time. Not Jeff Gordon, was it? Honestly, I I I couldn't tell Irrelevant. you. Irrelevant. He lost. Wait. Um, <laughs> it, it was but to pull out their captain. Yeah, Ryan Callahan, a, f- a first round pick in 2014, a first round pick in 2015, and a seventh rounder in 2015. We okay, didn't so use... I think this the second one may have been conditional, where it turned into a first round pick. Maybe. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. Yeah, so I mean, that is pulling, I think, a heck of a lot because Ryan Callahan was a guy that was a heart and soul player. Um, and then you had Marty, who. I don't know. I, th- I think he burns a lot of bridges. Maybe you guys have different uh, viewpoints on it, but uh, what do you think about that one? I would say we <laughs> won it. It wasn't Marty. It's more. It's more for the feels. Like before we let Stamkos walk, that was the big heartbreaking free uh, front office move, in my opinion. Letting the guy who at the time was the greatest of all time leave. But well, he he he. I know he, he wanted it. to go. Senses are yeah. way different, but still, it's just like this guy's been the face of the franchise, and now he's in a different uniform. Um, I mean, the thing that gives me kind of closure is he didn't play that long, and not to mention the one full season he did play for the Rangers. Uh, he who who beat him in the playoffs. <laughs> That's fair. That's See, fair, Bolts baby. I wasn't around when the whole debacle happened. Like I wasn't in touch with the Lightning. I wasn't a fan of the team quite yet. So I. I have no bad feelings towards Marty. I only see him as a franchise goat or maybe second in line right now behind Stamkos or so. I only see him as that and only that. I've heard about it, you know, a million times, a million different ways, what's happened. But still, like, I I can understand Marty's side of it. I get it. So yeah. I, I hold no ill will towards anybody. Franchise in goat was just that season named captain of the team they're in the hunt for the playoffs he had always been in in tampa for for everything and then he says that you know he can't play here anymore there's a lot of people that had the uh, hurt feelings over it i know that i i do uh, pretty heavily but uh i can understand too forgiving and forgetting even till this day i was starting to get over it and then we've revisited <laughs> the actual trade and i was like man that was just that, that one's done see yeah. i was go yeah, what makes it sting for me is I was watching this video on YouTube a few years ago. It was like with Stamkos, and they're like showing him like photos throughout his career, and he's like remembering like what it was like in the moment. One of them was the handshake line right after they had beaten the Rangers in Game Seven to go to the final, and he's just talking about it so negatively. He's like, you know, it's my first final. We finally made it. I'm so happy, but I'm shaking the hands of the guy who's been my friend, my mentor. I wanted him to come with us, and instead, I had to basically t- put him out and would essentially end his career dang so, that's yeah i've never heard that that's kind of sad that's kind of dark almost <laughs> like yeah like, if, you ever hear, like, like that. Much, if you ever hear about how much steven and like looks up to marty like he loves that guy so that one that one hit like it's just it's it's more of an emotional trade but like at the same time i'm still like man we did kind of i think we got the most out of it yeah, and if I can offer a bit of a consolation, I guess, like what continues this trade carrying on to this day. Maybe for you, Nick, maybe not so much for Joe because he's iffy on this player, but uh, we got <laughs> Anthony Sorelli out of this trade. Um, that is very true. With, you know, flipping those uh, two first round picks, uh, we didn't use either of them. Those picks went through a bit of a blender. I think they went to the Islanders and, and somebody else, but somehow, some way, we managed to get Anthony Sorelli out of that trade as well. So that trade that's, still li- lives on to this day. And it, that's funny. I don't have the, the ability to do it as uh, you know, hosting the show, but uh, Dan actually posted in our live chat that the third round pick they got from Marty, I believe was used to select Sorelli. Oh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. And still yeah. Galahan was a great player for us when he was here mm-hmm. or the a for a while. Like he was one of the guys when we finally did get over that hump and lift the cup. I was sad. He couldn't be there to lift it with 100%. us. 100%. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially because he's a guy that put out so much. He sacrificed his body a lot. And he was a guy that, I mean, as a, you know, trash hockey player myself, I always idolized his, his style of play. And, you know, that's the guy that I kind of aspired to be like, and uh, for his back to literally not be able to carry the team anymore with them having his back issues. That was a hard one. That was yeah. a, that was a hard retirement. 
he might be the epitome of like a heart and soul player. Like I know it's a overused trope, but man, just every shift he put all into it. And again, I only got to see the, the tail end of it. You know, when he came, when I started watching in the 16, 17 season, just dealing with injuries and a pretty drastic fall off, but still you would see it every time he was healthy or even playing banged up. The dude just loved the game. And he's just a great guy too off the ice. People can't talk about him highly enough. He's an excellent guy. The only and, and, thing I have- Sorry. The only negative thing I got to say about that guy is now he's a commentator, and whenever he commentates on lightning games, sometimes he'll have to say something negative. Oh, yeah. And I feel like he's betraying us every time he does it. It, fe- it, it honestly feels watching him that uh, he uh, he tries extra hard to be unbiased when uh, Tampa's uh, the team that he's, he's commentating commentator. on. I like, I like listening to him. But yeah. yeah so, like, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> he went to the Ray Ferraro school of shouting his color, though, you know? That's <laughs> it, uh, And... Dan actually just made another comment. If you could pull it up, uh, Eureka, going again with uh, how one trade impacts another. Pulling Call- Callahan over was probably a really big reason why we were able to get McDonough. Uh, Callahan opened the door for New York uh, free agency pipeline. Um, it wasn't just like you know McDonough, or it was uh, like Girardi, oh, um, yeah. Strawman, you know, Girardi, Strawman, uh, oh. signing signing those guys. And that was Brian because Boyle. They, that may be that had to have been a a free free agent because I definitely didn't pop pop up on uh, one of the trades. I'm gonna go now with my actual favorite trade, and um, you know it was actually mentioned in the chat already. For a while there, we were having a huge goalie problem, which might be foreshadowing for my worst trade. But we were having a huge goalie problem in Tampa, and we traded a prospect that was like uh, the original ABB. Um, Corey Conacher, we traded him straight up for Ben Bishop, who solidified uh, the the goaltending position for years with Tampa, and uh, really helped uh, not just stabilize the team, but also groom and uh, bring up Vasilevsky, uh, teaching teaching him the ropes on what it's like to be a pro player. And I think that was a huge one because I don't think Conacher played, but maybe one season for the Senators, maybe two before. He started to be a journeyman uh, as well, bouncing between teams and and AHL clubs. Yeah, just like with the uh, the picks you were talking about, Nick going to New Jersey, Nolan Foot in that first rounder uh, turning into nothing. It's even better when you get the guy back, Corey Conacher. I don't know how long it was after the trade, but he comes back to the Lightning. And I don't know, did he ever really have a consistent role with the team, or was he always just kind of an up and down guy? Regardless, you get the the main guy in a deal back in a trade for free. I call that a win every day. And you, when you get a Vezina level goalie who takes you to the finals as well as part of that trade, that one is also a, a clean sweep for the Lightning. Oh, I mean, he so Conacher played 35 games that uh, first season for the Lightning. He was a you know someone that was pulled up from the A, and that was a, a team that, that was the Admirals that were playing really, really well. Um, in 35 games, he had nine goals and 15 assists for 24 points. He he was really really fast player. He was good with his hands. He was a little bit undersized. Let's see. It says that he's listed as five eight, a little more than a, a little bit. He was definitely on the the shorter end of the spectrum. Um, and he also has uh, type one diabetes, which you know he that's an ex- extra thing that he'd have to to battle through and and work uh, work with. So besides just being short, he did a lot to become <laughs> such a, a great player. Um, and then really helped the Lightning out with with that trade halfway through the season because he showed up on the scene, was was putting some goals in, and then we got such a great asset for him. Yeah, just like with uh, uh, Vlad Nemesnikov that one season, just do a, a pump and dump, inflate those numbers, and sell them <laughs> off for high. <laughs> uh, that, that's funny. No, that's um, a good choice, though, Joe. I mean, we they got the guy who really, besides, you know, obviously like Stamp Cousin Heaven, brought them back to the – and brought him into the golden era that they would, you know, eventually go on to succeed. I mean, people love Ben Bishop while he was here. Like, I loved oh, him. Yeah. To death. I remember, like, you know, when that, like, uh, goalie battle was kind of starting to go on. I'm like, who the heck is this Vasilevsky guy? He's got nothing on Bishop. What is this? That would uh, that would not last long. But still, like, I mean, he, I pretty much give him resp- responsibility for bringing this team back into its glory years. Like, if I can make a comparison – so I feel like how I view him now, I view him similarly to how I think Patriot fans view Drew Bledsoe uh, in the sense that they were a struggling team 
and then they draft and then they get this like one guy in and he becomes like this mainstay super popular he gets him to a championship only to get eventually get replaced by a younger person at the same position who goes on to become one of the greatest of all time i like that comparison that's a real good comparison yeah definitely solid and when you look at conacher's numbers his best season after that was uh, 60 games played for the Sanders. He got 16 points and those 35 for the lightning. He had 15. So it's uh, one that worked out really well for us because if we held on to that asset it may have turned into to absolutely nothing. One of my, uh, I, guess, I guess I'll throw in one of the extracurricular uh, honorable mentions, whatever you want to call it, which does not abide by your rules, Joe. I'm sorry. That's all um, good. That's what they're for. But it's one of my favorite, favorite trades in lightning history i don't think it's up there with no it's definitely one of the most important trades but it was a three-way trade between the tampa bay lightning detroit wet red wings and the colorado this. avalanche yeah you know that where i'm going with this I think where I know. oh I, I forget how it all shook out but somehow the lightning acquired kyle quincy and traded him i think they acquired him from the avalanche and traded him to the detroit red wings for a first round pick I think it was pick number 19 in the 2012 draft. That pick turned out to be Andre Vasilevsky, which is just a nasty bit of work from Steve Eiserman. Like, that was crazy how Kyle Quincy turned into Andre Vasilevsky. Love that deal. <laughs> well, moving on with an- another honorable mention, I think it's time for us to mention shop.rblrsports.com. Use cold Code BOLTS for 10% off. We have team-inspired merch, some cool, unique gear that you can only find here and helps keep the lights on. So support your boys, support RBLR Sports, and look like a baller with shop.rblrsports.com. All right. Was that, was that, uh, you think Jake would, would be proud of that one? <laughs> I think it'll get a passing grade. All right. That's all I'm looking for. I'm, I'm like you, Matt, getting the, getting the C's and C's get uh, degrees. That's it, baby. All right, let's move on to our least favorite trades, which can be equally as uh, as interesting. And honestly, there's there's some that uh, you know, even mentioning the Marty trade could also go down as one of the least favorite trades of all time. But let's focus on ones where the bolts really did not uh, fare well in the trade. And it looks like Matt, you got one ready to go. Not really. This one was difficult because I didn't want to go yeah. with the obvious recent answer in Tanner Janot. Like, okay, that hold one, on. Did you? Yeah. Did we? Did you decide Nick as well to to skip Janot? He's like my backup option in case like you guys say something that That's I was bad. But like we, I think we all can agree. Like, yeah. I think yeah, I think we should go ahead and talk about if that because we all so decided recent. that. Yeah, if it wasn't recent, I would have said it obviously. <laughs> yeah, like i don't know like i loved you know as a player and i know you did too joe like we all or you know me and you are on the same page of he didn't get a fair shot here injuries kind of hampered you know what he could do who he was playing with you know it's kind of the same story we've said for two years now um it sucks that we paid a king's ransom for him i know cal foot was part of that deal who was a former first round pick who turned into nothing quite literally nothing but then a first a second a third a fourth and a fifth like, that trade's going to take a while to fully pan out. You know, we'll be really lucky if all five of those picks turn into nothing or at best, like, fourth-line players. But you get five picks, the odds there's, are you hitting on one. There's going to be someone that comes out of that. And if not, like you said, playing the tree game, there's going to be something else that uh, – someone else that gets involved that, we you know, we could have had. And it – you know, I've, you know, I've said it in, in – many different ways i really wish we had be able to hold on to that pick and see what what could have uh, come with it or, or that that player rather um in Geno. but because he was traded you have to lock it in as a huge loss that mm-hmm. is jbb's huge swing and miss now because you know it he's not able to to see it through it it really uh that's a tough one and Nick, you know, we've all shared our opinion, you know, me and Joe and Jake and Michael and everybody. But what is your opinion on Jano, the player, what he did while he was here and, you know, the thoughts of the trade to bring him here overall? What are your thoughts on the player in the trade? I think like people forget at the time people saw it as a smart move. Like when it happened, I thought it made it sense. But now with the power of hindsight, oh god, no, they never should have done that. I mean, I I actually kind of like the guy. Like he always seemed like pretty good, and I, you know, it's not like there's like some players, you know, they come here, 
to the team and they like they just don't care. Like you can kind of see that. He clearly cared. He tried. He just he you just couldn't he couldn't do it, unfortunately. And that just that hurt him. Um so he's also on a line with guys that couldn't do it either, which probably hurt yeah, him like, equally. It's just it's unfortunate for him, but I think he's just gonna forever be remembered as the symbol of like us declining from the cup winning years and I, th- I think most people will probably associate this with letting Stamkos walk, but like if the team like really crashes in the future years and JBB gets fired, I think we really should remember that as kind of like the first sign of like, oh, maybe he's not as good as we hyped him up to be. Because like that might be his first like m- major, major miss. You know, you can always argue that, you know, some trades were bad, but like this one was like objective miss. Well, we'll, we'll see too, though, if he ends up, being a really good player, then his hand may have been forced in order to free up cap space before he could develop into one because he's only played for realistically what two and a half full seasons, maybe. Let's say uh, given maybe his... closer to four. Yeah, like, oh, for I, the I Lightning in total, he bounced back. I think. He... Well, for the Lightning, he didn't even play one full season, right? He didn't yeah. play a full eighty-four games, and before that, he played for Nashville for, um, I think like maybe one season, a season and then and a half. Yeah, yeah. Right. So he yeah, doesn't have that long in, in the league. I really think he came to the wrong situation, honestly. He probably would have been better going to a team that's not as competitive or successful. Like, that sounds mean, but, like, it would give him more time to kind of grow, adapt to the league. Instead, he can't sure. jump to an area where he had – there was way too much expectations that he just wasn't ready for. Well, you know, we can get uh... – we can look forward to talking about this topic more in the future. Maybe in a couple of years when we have a segment of players that could have been, we'll be listing March or so and Verhage and Tanner Janot as guys we wish we'd have, we would have kept. Um, for my for my worst trade, um, I kind of hinted before it was a goalie one. We traded Frederick Modine. Uh, this was back in 2006, so it's probably dating you guys a little bit. We traded Frederick Modine who was a, he won the Stanley Cup with the Lightning. Oddly enough, I think he was the last player pretty much in the league to still use a wooden stick, which is, man, that's making me sound old, but it's, uh, <laughs> he was still good with it. I think he, uh, in like a skills competition, had over a 100 mile an hour slap shot with the, uh, with his wooden stick. But Mark Deneep was goaltender for the Columbus Blue Jackets, who was like, he was just an awesome goaltender for them. And we traded him in order to basically fill the void that uh, was left when Javi Bolin um, was no longer with the team. And that really kind of sparked the start of goaltender uncertainty for almost the next 10 years until we got uh, Ben Bishop. Um, I mean, you, you could, some could argue maybe Mike Smith, but that was the start of, you know, really having goaltender issues because Mark Denis, he played 44 games the first season with the Lightning. Now, mind you, he was like a, like a Vesna candidate. Um, he went 17 wins, 18 losses with a .883 save percentage, 3.19 goals against. The second season that we had him, uh, he played 10 games, went one for five because he was pulled for a few, .859 save percentage, 4.05 goals against. The next season, he played one one game for Montreal and was out of the league. He ended up being like a, a it's sad to say, but kind of like a head case. Like he just couldn't couldn't uh, stay in the league. Freddie Mo he battled through some injuries after his first season with Columbus, but he played for another seven years. Dang, I'd, I'd like to make a note real quick about Freddie Modine. Didn't you have him as a uh, a Hall of Fame snub, Nick, in uh, your? One of your uh, recent not, articles? Not a snub, but yes, I put him on like my top five players who probably should be in the Hall of Fame. I mean, he has a good case. And hockey Hall of Fame or or, or something for the Lightning? Hockey Hall of Famer. Oh, he'll be a light. He'll be in the Lightning Hall of Fame like eventually. Like they already like treat him like a legend. It's just a matter of time. Oh yeah. Men. But he I think he's huge. He have, yeah, I think he has an argument to be, you know, in the Hall of Fame. That was a hard list to make though, because like, you know the obvious guys who deserve to be in the Hall of Fame are kind of still playing, so had to do a lot of digging, but I think he has a legit case. It was a good read. Everybody should go check that out, by the way. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, Fre- Freddie Mo was a really, he was a really critical part of that uh, cup run, uh, you know, a really big figure, and and giving him up for 
for a goalie that basically basically just kind of crashed out of the league as soon as the Lightning acquired him. That that's my big my big swing and miss for uh, uh, for trades. I didn't realize the uh, the ramifications that would bring. I didn't. You know, I've never really checked in on that trade. You know what it did, or I guess what it didn't do for the Lightning. I didn't realize it was that bad. Uh, an over four GAA is rough, real rough. Um, he looked like I, some of my beer league goalies. I, I could make him look great. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we still got to do that, by the way. I still need to uh, to suit up. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, we'll make it happen next time we have a practice. We'll get we'll get you out there. <laughs> uh, Nick, did you have one that uh, you just dislike? What, what, what's the term we're using for this? A bad trade, bad trade. But I'm still kind of on the fence. But I think I have two that are I think are pro- probably worth a mention. The first one is. We traded uh, Brad Richards along with a goal, goaltender. I know I'm going to mess this name up. Uh, Jonah Holmquist to the Stars. In exchange, we got a guy that you actually just brought up, Joe. Mike Smith, who did not do that well for us. Uh, Jeff Hamperin, UC Jokin, and a 2009 fourth-round pick. Yeah, we traded away the guy who was going to have his best seasons later. And what makes it hurt, hurt the most is he eventually would come go to the Blackhawks and beat us in the Stanley Cup Finals in that's exchange a, for guys who point. didn't really do that much for us. I so. mean, I, it, see, I would almost argue... So that was one of the picks that came up, but but as a as a win, you know, because you had to dump the salary cap, and you got out of a starting goaltender who, you know, I think Mike Smith was probably um, his, his a best victim of the... Better to come. Yeah, and he was also a victim of the circumstances of the OK Cowboys, the Oren Cools uh, era of of hockey in, in Tampa, which was absolutely an insane time. But uh, but Jokinen was had some some decent hands. He was a he was a fun player to watch. And what was the the other guy that uh, that you mentioned? Yes. Halperin. Oh, Halprin. Halprin. Yeah, Halprin was. He ended up you know being a coach for the Lightning. Yeah, still is, is, right? yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he still is. I think he's still on the coaching staff. Yeah, but yeah, our power play specialist, right? <laughs> yeah, I just the reason I'll say it's bad, besides the fact that we traded away a guy who was about to make an All Star team to the with to the Stars and would eventually beat us in the Stanley Cup, which makes it hurt. Is to me, this is like a major symbol of like the dark ages, like right after they had won the Cup. Like, if you remember that time, like, you know, obviously now we're blessed with great un- ownership. At the time, we did not have great ownership. They were selling off pieces, like, you know, franchise They're faces. They're treating like a, like, a, like a a fantasy league. Yeah, they did not care. They are trading away some of the more popular players, like him. And, like, that just pissed fans off and made them not want to attend. Like, I mean, thank God that this happened in 2008. So this is a few months before Stamkos came around and brought us back. But, like... This was like, in my opinion, like the peak of like, oh, this is this is bad, and there's no end in sight. Uh, let me let me add to your story. One of the reasons why it's a, a horrible trade. Back in 2008, you know, it was in my uh, mid mid twenties or early twenties. Um, my girlfriend at the time, uh, future wife to be, for my birthday, spent like a hundred dollars on a brand new lightning jersey. My first lightning jersey, was it and it was it was Richards. She asked who I wanted, and I was like, the guy with the seven-year contract that'll be there for a while. I love the way he plays, winning awards, winning cups. He was a, a great selection. And then that that uh, next year, he uh, ended up getting traded. And I swear to God, every time I wore that jersey, the Lightning would lose. Every time. I think it's a rite I of would, passage to have a cursed jersey, isn't it? You know, only uh, hockey fans are extremely superstitious. I wouldn't wear it for years, and I know she took it personally. <laughs> <laughs> but has that curse uh, worn off? I mean, curses don't, don't wear, wear off. I still own the jersey, but I won't dare wear it. Wow. What am I going to do to my boys? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess it's best you don't wear it. Uh, you got uh, a worst? Kind of. I was. Okay. <laughs> I, I guess I have like one and a half because one of them is really nitpicky, if you will. Like you know, again, we all could go over the Geno trade. Um, one is very, very hindsight. I guess everything is hindsight, but 
draft week 1999 when the Lightning was, owned. Yep. <laughs> that was, was the first to mention. Um, was it the first or second overall pick? Both. Both. They had the first I'll say pick. It. Then they traded it to the second. That was pick. the Vinny year, right? Uh, no, Vinny was 2000, pick. wasn't he? No, he was uh, the year before 98. 98. Oh, okay. 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 Um, so yeah, that makes it even worse because the Lightning had an opportunity to get at least one of the Sedin twins, and like if you get one, you can kind of parlay into getting a second one. And like, what could have been? Imagine you know Vinny Lecavalier with Daniel and Henrik Sedin. God knows how it would have happened. Like, you know, I guess you can't really, I guess you can call it a bad trade because it really did not help the Lightning at all. Um, I, I guess he did avoid, you know, drafting Patrick Steffen, who's like, a you know, one of the be- greatest busts in uh, NHL history. Uh, you know, his most famous play is uh, missing an open net. I was going to say the fall. Yeah. Oh. Um, but like, again, you had a chance to get at, least one Sedin. And if Brian Burke could have made that miracle happen, who knows what Rick Dudley could have done. You know, you, he held all the cards and, you know, managed to completely fold uh, his hand. So I guess, um, I don't know. Is that, is that nitpicky? Is that kind of, you know, reaching for, for a bad one? Cause it's, it's a kind of what could have been type of trade. I mean, I like those too, because, you know, we could probably have a segment on draft picks with guys that missed out. And, and one of my favorite guys to gripe about Matt, do you know where I'm going to go with this one? Or a I draft pick? I do. Oh wait, uh, Brett, Brett Connolly. Because <laughs> <laughs> what a miss that was getting Brett Connolly. We could have had Jeff Skinner instead, and instead we, you know, swung. But um, yeah, I mean, we can we can make that one count for sure. I was going to use that for my honorable mention because I didn't know that counted because there weren't really players involved. But it's just, man, we could have had one of two Hall of Famers. And to make it worse, I was doing research for it. They were going to draft one of them. They. Literally, they've come out and said they were going to draft it, but then they let Brian Burke convince them that unless uh, his brother was coming with them, they would, weren't coming to Tampa. I mean, Kucherov I th- wasn't a first rounder. Wasn't I mean I, I don't know how valid that was if they you know were a package deal, if they were actually going to abide by that because they were, and you know to the very end of their career, you know even before they were in the NHL, they were a package deal. They always played on the same line no matter what, like, um, I'm not sure if it, you know, continued into the NHL, but like, again, they were twins. They were something special. They were some of the most fun players to ever watch, uh, in tandem. So it's a shame they could never make it. They didn't make it work. Um, again, especially you held all the cards you had, you know, all ace, I don't play poker. Um, but you had a great hand and you did nothing with it. I I personally think that eventually one of them would come over because the thing is like, I don't think they played right away. I think they went back to Sweden for one more year. I just think that drafting both of them, like, got them over sooner. But I think eventually they kind of would have realized that, like, okay, we kind of have to go over if we want to play in the NHL. So it might have taken a bit. But I think eventually one of them would have come to Tampa. Especially because, like, that was – it was 99. So, like, you know, Le Cavier, Richard, St. Louis, those, those years weren't too far away. So, they, they weren't too far away, but also – that's one of those things too, where you can look at it and think that um, if we did have them, they never won a cup. No, if we did have them, maybe we don't win. So we had the combination that we needed and it could have prevented the the right guys. Think about how freaking hungry Marty was, you know, a guy that constantly was bumped down to the lower lines every single game by Tortorella and then eventually would be brought up. He was so hungry, fiery, and fierce. And uh, if you if you have the Sedins there, maybe you don't move him up ever, and he doesn't become who he became. You know, was, we're all a product of the environments that we grow up in. And you know, who's, if you change those those things, what's that? What's the the butterfly effect? Mm-hmm. Well, my my argument against that is that they weren't really the Sedins yet in two thousand three, two thousand four. They were still, you know these two guys who really couldn't really find their footing. They might be bust. It took them a while to really establish themselves as, you know, not only just good players, but superstars. And, you know, that was more towards, you know, post. Yeah, that was definitely post lockout is when they really started tapping into their potential and seeing what they could really do together and get adapted to NHL ice. It was not an immediate. These guys are superstars, hall of fame players. So, 
that's my argument but, against it. And this is all, all just speculation. You know, what could have been, you know, yeah, and, I, but we have and a, I do raise a great point. This is peak off season yeah. content. Yeah, we have, we uh, have another uh, comment in chat too, related to that. Um, if you could bring, pull it up, Eureka, uh, would the Sedines have been the Sedines if they didn't play together? That's a so great question. A question, but I don't know. But then you could also argue like what I was just saying, like they wait to come over. Marty makes his ascent while before they come before they come over. Now you have Sedines with Marty with a prime Marty Saint Louis. What does that look like? It looks like like three cups or something, but yeah. <laughs> it, right, well, then you but... still have the lockout issue that broke up the team anyway. Yeah. All right, I have one more, one more uh, honorable mention too, which Go. is Dan Dan Boyle and Brad Lukowicz were traded for Matt Carl <laughs> and Ty Wishart. Uh, Carl played twelve games; he had twelve points for the Lightning, and we got rid of one of the best two way defensemen. Uh, I would argue of of all time, he'd probably be in a top twenty list uh, for for two way defensemen and 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 Boyle. He was he was awesome. How many? Wait, you said how many points and how many games for Carl? He played twelve games for the Lightning in his first stint, and he had two points. Oh, okay. You said twelve points. I was like, he's a point per game. Did I say that backwards? All right. Good. I was that like, would what? be yeah. <laughs> well, that was he was supposed to have offensive upside, but really? uh, then he went to Philly where he. You know, started to blossom and he came back to the bolts. He just wasn't good again. Yeah, he's one of those like black spots, like players that um, people don't talk too highly of. Uh, again, <laughs> I did, I never really got to watch a lot of him, but he's in that. You know, you're lucky. Sh- sh- <laughs> he's in that category. It's one of those like, what are you doing, man? What are you doing? Like you're pushing the offense, sacrificing defense, and now you turned over the puck and there's no one back. Mm. That's you know th- those games where you yell at the TV for somebody blowing up a play. That's what I remember best about uh, about you know that second stint that he had with the Bolts. Maybe I'm glad I missed that. Yeah, you should be. <laughs> um, right, I got so one I want to bring up. Just it. curious what you guys think because I'm kind of on the fence about it. I'm leaning toward bad, but I understand why. We traded brian boyle at the trade deadline to the maple Leafs in exchange for a player who played four games with us and a second round draft pick uh, I, I know why the, i know why they did it he was in this final year of his contract he was having a career year they would have had to pay him a lot that said do you guys remember how good he was for new jersey when he after he like, was we, pretty after we let him go wasn't he pretty all right with jersey yeah he made the cancer made the first right yeah, he made the All-Star in, team. in New Jersey, he went there, played a couple games, and had cancer. Yeah, but you know, he made the All Star team. It was really wow. good for them. All. I think we played him in the actually. Yeah, we played him in the playoffs. Played the against them. Yeah, but and still, I, like, he was yeah, he had a couple more good years left in him. I don't know, but I get, I guess they would have had to re-sign him, but I don't know. Twenty seventeen was that weird? Was the like that one year that we like missed the playoffs, even though mm-hmm. we had a winning record. I don't and, know, maybe having him makes helps us make the push. I don't know. Interdivisional trading is never a good idea. I'm pretty much always against it. Um, and then trading him to the Maple Leafs, who ended up being the team that got in the playoffs ahead of us by one single point. Like Brian Boyle had to help at least with yeah. one point, and you know, from the trade deadline on. So that one I haven't even really thought about that until yeah. you did bring that up. So that and like does I said, play a huge we, factor. You, and all we got was a guy who played Maple four Leafs, games. So. Four games. That's all I got. Our, uh, the Canadian was it the Maple Leafs or the Maple Leafs that you played? Maple for? Leafs. Maple all right. Leafs, so yeah. the, the Canadians with the inner, uh, I, I guess, divisional trade, where we got Sergachev. Ah. I mean, that's for oh, that's for like a a, a Druin that, you know, maybe now he's good, but man, he struggled with some stuff for years and years and years, and we got, uh, a, you know, if it wasn't for Hedman, a, a number one defenseman for the team. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I remember. I, I say it every time, and every time it pops up in my memories, I have a uh, w- the uh, you know the whatever you call it, the statement the Lightning made on Facebook. Hey, we traded Jonathan Druin for Mikhail Sergachev from Montreal, and I said expletive this, and I hated that trade for a <laughs> while, for a good while. But it ended up being again one of the more important trades in the team's oh, history. Yeah, yeah. Druin was never gonna do much here because he just he didn't get along with anyone he, he like he feuded with stevie y 
There was too much talent on him. I get why he had the ego. You're drafted third overall. You're a hyped prospect, and you're stuck. I think he also got really bad guidance from. I think it was like his father was acting as his agent. And I, I think it's really bad guidance that he got. He he held out on his contract uh, extension. He held out uh, with the team, and um, I mean, he really struggled with some issues. He he took some time off too playing. He didn't start doing well until uh, he went back to Colorado. Yeah, like yeah that's, he's or a, went okay. over to Colorado. I should McKinnon say. Merchant. Yeah, he struggled in Montreal partly because they put tried putting too much on him. Like they were really struggling at that time. So, so you're on so a could be, of, We could have. I faced could be him. wrong, but I think he knew Mac. Before. Oh yeah, they played uh, on their junior team together. That's why. Yeah. So um, I mean, less of a merchant, I, I would say, is and like he finally got into a scenario that he was comfortable with. It's ironically, we could have like played him in the Stanley Cup, but like you mentioned, he what, what was it? He was having like mental health issues or something like that, yeah, so something he, like that. Know. Yeah, like yeah, that's he, why I feel bad for him. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, he's coming back now, so good for him, but like I said, he, right, well, he was not gonna succeed here. Let, let, let me uh transition us a little bit. Do you guys have any of uh interesting trades as well that you'd like to bring up? I already brought up the, the Kyle Quincy for Andre Vasilevsky trade, yeah. I love that. Well, so I mean, I have, I just have literally one, and that was just because it's so weird. Is that, oh. yeah, uh, the Bolts traded Zomner, who I'm not even sure who that that is to be honest, and uh, it's because it's a little bit before. Rob Zomner. Was that his name? Yep. Yep. He was our captain. He was he was the captain of the team. That's the awesome. They uh, they traded him for Rick Dudley, who was the G- <laughs> the GM. Uh, so the GM traded his own right, like the the organization traded the rights for the GM to be able to uh, talk for the Lightning to sign. So we basically traded for a general manager, Rick Dudley, who is the one that um, fostered Feaster into being the eventual GM that uh, won us our first cup. That is such an interesting trade, and there's not a whole lot you can like peel back. You know, it's it's not much of a tree, I guess, but like. Even not in NHL history, but sports history, it's such an interesting. Trade. How does how does a GM yeah. get involved as mm-hmm. part of the of of the trade? That yeah, it's a really strange one, right? Does he volunteer to trade himself? Is that how this works? Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> weird, like, guys. Like, I have a really good trade. trade. If you're ownership, <laughs> so who is the trade are, with? Are you that desperate to get out of there? Let's see. Do you have it uh, up, pulled up there, Nick? Hmm? Oh, I can look that up. Rick Dudley. Because yeah. there's a lot of places, you know, I'd, you know, trade myself away from to get to Tampa. I thought, oh, yeah. In... How, yeah how, how mad would this guy have, must have been with his own organization? He was probably like, how can I get out of here? Oh my God. I have the most what if I give you a captain from another team? <laughs> can you get me out of my contract? I think it was one of the Canadian uh, teams that he, he, he was. Uh, Done deal. I'd trade myself uh, away from Canada. He too. was the hired as the general manager for the Ottawa Senators. After which he was hired by the Lightning, who traded Selmer as part of the package for the rights to negotiate with him. What an amazing organization the Senators have been over the years. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, you got to feel bad. Honestly, I, I do feel bad for Senators fans if you look at the talent that they've had come through there, and they've been able to do. Not Char was a Senator. Prime um, Eric Carlson, Daniel oh, Huffinson, man. Mark Stone. Yeah, yeah. Brady uh, Poor Brady Kachuk is now uh, stuck there. I love Brady Kachuk too. Yeah. And like, I think uh, over the course of the what thirty-one or thirty-two years now since nineteen ninety-two, they were our expansion uh, brothers. Yeah, I think they, they have a better record, like over the regular season. Um, it, those numbers might be kind of crossing paths now, but. At least at a certain point, they were the way, way better team uh, throughout their existence. And then, you know, here we are with three cups, fat and happy, you know, kind of riding off into the sunset. And they're still just trying to keep their head above water. You do kind of have to feel bad for them. They, they there just were had fan- terrible ownership. That's, that's there were fans was. taking out billboards criticizing the ownership. That's insane. Oh, I mean, not criticizing. Dude, they were calling for his head. No, do you blame him? Like, do you know some of the stuff this guy did? Like, he threatened oh. to relocate the team during an alumni game before, like, a stadium series game that they were hosting. Like, he was super cheap. He he always meddled. Like, t- ticket prices were expensive. Like, there's a reason the Senators could not sell out a playoff game, and that's because the arena was put in a terrible place. Like, the city of Ottawa hated that guy. 
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. yeah, and it, it definitely showed. And I mean, it, you, you definitely feel bad for him and it's for the fans because the fans don't, you know, if any team doesn't yeah. deserve to have like really crappy ownership. But we've gone through it too. Like the OK Cowboys was a wild time, and that's one of the times I had season tickets. So I'm paying money that I probably couldn't have afforded at the time to watch a team that well, the lineup was different damn near every game, you know, if not every week. And Barry Melrose was the coach for like 16 games. What, yeah. <laughs> you know, what sort of world is that? Just, oh God, if you ever just want to be entertained though, just look up like Mont- Ottawa Senators, like screw ups over the years. It's the funniest thing. Like they screwed up during the draft lottery because they accidentally picked like several players who they could not draft, forcing their GM to go up there and apologize. The reason they did that is because they let their laptop die. So they had no data or like right after they like made that run to the conference finals where they lost in OT of game seven, the, to the penguins, you know, that fall off after that. Oh yeah. Like look into the the drama going on behind that. That's so entertaining. Like the worst part is like, they were like interviewing the GM and he just like gives up when they ask him like, so give give me some, like what's something good about this team. And he straight up just says, we're a he team. Looks down, we're a team. I love that clip. <laughs> that is a man who gave up on life right there. Like, oh, that poor man. And then even, you know, relatively recently trying to trade, uh, uh, or they traded, who was Evgeny Dodana to the Golden Knights, and the Golden Knights were trying to trade him to the Ducks, but the Senators never submitted Dodanov's no trade uh, list to the Golden Knights. So the Golden Knights didn't realize that Dodonov had the Ducks on his no trade list. So then the Sens got fined, I think, two oh first round God. picks for that, or at least one first round pick for that, which is just horrible mismanagement of not even assets, just a piece of paper. Should we feel bad that we sent Matthew Joseph over there? No. Uh, <laughs> no, because he scored on us. I got yeah. one more really, really obscure. Yeah, when he, when he never does shorthand it. I got one more really obscure trade. Uh, which was brought up in chat as well. Uh, Dan, thank you uh, for all the contributions to this episode. He's brought a lot of uh, of of content for us. On June 29th, 2014, the Tampa Bay Lightning acquired uh, Sam Gagne in exchange for Teddy Purcell. Gagne, however, only spent an hour <laughs> as a member of the Lightning before then being acquired by the Arizona Coyotes, along with BJ Crombie, in exchange for a sixth round pick in the 2015 NHL entry draft. Oh, no. Interesting. So it was basically a three-way deal for a salary dump and to get rid of of Purcell because of some issues that were going on within the team. But uh, I remember actually getting that, you know, the notification that that happened, that we acquired Gagne and being kind of excited that we had him as a player. <laughs> Uh, cause I liked him. I liked, he was a fast skater. Mm-hmm. I thought they would, he would have been good for the lightning and then kind of have him, you know, my heart broke an hour later because he <laughs> uh, got turned to the, to the coyotes for nothing. That's tough. Uh, so, well, I can give you one positive that I forgot to mention. I was talking about Blake Coleman earlier. This guy pretty much came with them. Barkley good, good draw trade. That one worked out. Cause all we traded with was a guy named Anthony Greco who never played a game for the, uh, sharks. And a 2021, or excuse me, 2020 first round pick, which ended up being the last pick in the first round. That guy is currently in the Nashville Predators minor league system. I don't think he played for the Sharks either. What's his name? Do you know? Uh, hold on, I can find it right it's, here. I'm wonder, uh, wondering if I'd recognize it, but it's a probable uh, no. Ozzy Weisblatt. Oh, Ozzy Weisblatt? I didn't know Weisblatt. that was. Okay. He was supposed to be something pretty good, but I guess that didn't happen he was just traded like this last year i'm pretty sure yeah he's in the yeah he he's with the uh milwaukee admirals the predators uh mm-hmm. minor league team yeah but so yeah i don't think i don't think yeah he hasn't made it to the nhl yet so basically we traded two guys two minor league guys for a guy who played a key role in winning back-to-back cups nice I mean, huge yeah the, we were, yeah huge we talked about the blake coleman buzzer beater who assisted him on that bogo yep. Yep. oh wait no <laughs> there, well, there was another one. <laughs> there was another one. Uh, You're talking about that now. There, there were two Superman goals, and one of them was a Bogosian, you know, coast to coast beauty that 
Blake Coleman Superman in. So that's like, yeah, that was the one that was like in the bubble, right? I yeah, I think it was against Boston. I say not even their goals, but also the uh, the defense. The defense, yeah. the the penalty kill was was yeah. insane with those guys. I mean that that was um, that was a hallmark of of those teams was the depth that the Lightning had and something that they really dramatically I feel like lost this last season. Hopefully the acquisitions that they made in the off season will make the difference where we start to see more of a uh, goal scoring differential for those for those bottom lines. That'd be nice. That would be nice. You guys have anything else to uh, to to bring up for interesting Lightning trades? I think we've ran pretty long unless Nick's got something else up his sleeve. I don't. And even if I did, I don't think I can top. We traded for the rights to negotiate for a GM. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, this has been fun. This is a, an episode, I, like I said, I was really looking forward to, especially in spite of not really having too much uh, exciting and fresh news in the Lightning world. But this was uh, a really enjoyable one. If you've made it this far, be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast. Uh, you can see find us on YouTube and all the other major platforms. And if you're on YouTube, you can get our live videos. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Thank you all very much for watching. We appreciate you. Go Bolts. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.